The following is a comparison of two classic stethoscopes. The first one is the features of the Rappaport Sprague Hewlett Packard stethoscope. There you have it. The Rappaport Sprague stethoscope, very, very well made. It was made by Hewlett Packard. Now you can buy imitations. It will still say Rappaport Sprague, but the Hewlett Packard name is gone. It's no longer there. Very, very high quality construction. Start with the a headpiece. It has a little bit of an angle to fit properly in the ear canals. When you put it into your ears, it goes in this way, in this direction. You nod your head a little bit, align the earpiece with your ear canal, and you hear very, very nicely. You use the stethoscope with the sound conducting perfectly to your eardrums by this kind of uh, adjustment. So very, very well made. High quality metal, very, very thick. So well done. Uh, look for features like this if uh, looking for a stethoscope. Uh, tubing looks very plain, very, very flexible, so bend very nicely, fit in your pocket very, very comfortably. Um, if you wear it around the neck and see patients, also it hangs comfortably. Um, the only commentary is uh, the tubing is sort of close together, so there may be some banging together. There are clips. Uh, I prefer not to use any clips. If I'm listening to a patient, I can always hold the tubing together and that will stop the clanging. Most of the time it is not an interference. Most of the time it does not distract. Headpiece. Very, very high quality construction. Looks like uh, just plain plastic bell, but it's sturdy, it's strong, and so you need to listen with the bell. If you don't have a bell in your stethoscope, you don't have a full stethoscope. You need that bell. Bell, you flip, put on a chest, you make a seal just by light pressure, just to seal off room noise. So the purpose of a bell is to be held lightly against the skin, uh, light pressure. You don't need to vary necessarily, but uh, you don't press too hard, otherwise you create a diaphragm out of the skin. Speaking of diaphragms, here's a diaphragm of the Hewlett Packard Rappaport Spray. Uh, nothing fancy, but uh, size-wise it's a little smaller than our other stethoscope. When the diaphragm is used, very, very firm pressure against the skin. When I pick up the stethoscope off the skin, usually there's a circle because I press that hard. Technique of listening, stethoscope goes in the ears, bell, diaphragm flip, back and forth, vary the pressure. Um, length is appropriate for leaning over a patient. That's all you need. By having short tubing, you conduct more sound. And there you have the uh, introduction or presentation of the old-time Hewlett Packard Rappaport Spray. Let's contrast this now with the Harvey stethoscope. Also, same generation of listeners. This one is still available, actually. You can buy a Harvey stethoscope, and this was what you'll get. Tubing may be a little different. It may be a single tube. Uh, here, the two separate tubes don't really clang together because they're a little further apart. When you use it again, you can just pinch the tubing together. Up on top, very, very high quality metal earpieces. Again, they have the angle as they should, and I prefer to use a rigid earpiece. Uh, during a day's auscultation, uh, rubber pieces that invade the ear canal are probably not as comfortable and probably not as productive. Uh, it's my belief that rigid earpieces conduct more sound to the eardrums actually than uh, vibration absorbing rubber tubing. Seal is better, but vibrations are dampened. So that's just an opinion, but there you have it. Again, it goes into the ear with a little nod. You use the stethoscope, uh, tubing about the same. Very, very high quality uh, rubber tubing, difficult to compress. If you took a look at the diameter bore, is very, very small, so a lot of sound insulation in both tubing, in, in both stethoscopes. This is the interesting part about the Harvey. A lot of thought went into it. Um, solid metal construction. Bell on the Harvey is made out of metal. Sturdy. A little smaller also than the uh, uh, Hewlett Packard. Let's just show uh, the two for comparison. So Bell, somewhat smaller. I don't know which is the proper size of bell, but there you have a difference between the two. While we're doing differences, diaphragms are also different size. The diaphragm on the Harvey is bigger 
than the diaphragm on the Hewlett Packard Rappaport spray. A matter of preference, maybe some d the difficulties or issues when listening to patients, but this is where in the Harvey they introduce another part that the uh, uh, Rappaport spray Hewlett Packard does not have. This is called the corrugated diaphragm. It's got some indentations in it. It's meant to be pressed with variable pressure on the skin and that will change the nature of the sounds that one hears, but there is a diaphragm, it's not a bell, therefore there is some filtering involved, so it's a matter of preference. Last commentary about this design, if you put your finger into this part of the Harvey stethoscope, you can dangle the bell over the skin, press the bell on the skin, and actually vary the pressure. By varying the pressure, you actually convert the skin to a diaphragm, then you don't. So you can vary the pressure, and with that, the nature of the sounds will uh, differ. So it's a very, very handy way to alter what you're hearing in the process of auscultation. And there you have it, a comparison between two classic stethoscopes, the Harvey and the Hewlett-Packard Rappaport Spray.